Hey guys, Ethan here. Today I wanted to talk about getting Elden Ring with Easy anti cheat working on Gentoo Linux. When the game initially released, there was a bit of issue where Linux users were having trouble actually getting into the game because Easy anti cheats checks would fail. That was solved within the first couple days of launch through patches by the game developers and also patches in Proton, though some users have still had trouble getting it to work. For example, if you're on Gentoo Linux and you try to open the game, even with the proper Proton versions, you'll be met with an issue saying that the anti-cheat module failed to load and the game will close. Now, the solution that was proposed was just to run the game under Flatpak, and that was supposed to fix the problem, and for a lot of people it did. But there are some cases, like myself, where that wasn't enough, and in this video I'm going to go through all the steps that I took to make sure that I was able to get the game running on my system and hopefully get yours running too. So the first thing that I have here is the Steam DB page showing Elden Ring. And if you go down here to supported systems, you can see that the game is marked as Steam Deck verified, which means that on some version of Linux, whatever the Steam Deck is running and through whatever versions of Proton the Steam Deck has, and even if there's a separate binary for the Steam Deck, this game should work. But that can be extended to Linux as a whole for the most part. The Proton DB lists this game as gold, saying that the multiplayer support has easy anti-cheat and it's limited support. So I'm going to go over now how I got it to work. The first step that I took was going to the Gentoo Wiki and taking a look at the Flatpak section of the Steam page. Of course, this will be linked in the description. Now. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to take a look at the Flatpak wiki page. And if we go down to the installation section, we'll see that it has the emerge command. This by itself may work for you. However, on the flatpak.org website under setup, you'll see that the Flatpak, uh, the package right here, they tell you to install it with the testing AMD64 keyword. So what this might look like is if you go to etc portage package dot accept keywords you may add sysapps flatpak with the amd64 keyword and then re-emerge it. Additionally the Steam page actually recommends that you set the minus SUID flag for bubble wrap. And what that might look like is package.use. If you go down to bubble wrap, you'll see that I have it set to minus SUID. So again, you can re-emerge that. After setting both of those flags, it may be beneficial for you to run an emerge dash AUQV capital D, capital N at world, or it would be a changed use and new use, if I recall correctly. Regardless, make sure both packages are installed properly. So I'll take a look at what my flat pack is installed as. You'll see it's on version 1.13.2, which is the testing version at the moment, most recent. And we'll look at bubble wrap now and we'll see that it's compiled without the SUID flag. The next thing that we're gonna take a look at is the kernel. So if we go to our kernel directory, in my case, I'm using Gen2 sources. So if you go to CD user source Linux, and we do a make menu config, the kernel version that we'll be dealing with here should be 5.16.12. Go to general setup and we're just going to scroll down until we find the namespaces. There we go, namespaces support like that. And we're going to enable user namespaces. And this seems to be enabled by default in this kernel. In fact, I can't even turn it off. But if this is not enabled for you, enable it and I'll go to the help page. If you're trying to search for it, it's user ns. And to search, of course, you press the slash key on your keyboard and just type user ns and it'll bring you to this page where you can then press whatever number is listed here to make your way to this page. Now, once that's done, if any changes were made, make sure to recompile your kernel. However you do that, in my case, I do make 
with my dash J flag. And then I supplement that with another command, make modules install, and then another install to actually put that in my slash boot directory. And then to actually load the kernel afterwards, I copy it from the BZ image and I put it to where EFI boot manager will find it. That's how I do it on my system. It's different on every system. So if you don't have your system set up my way, which should be on a video about EFI boot manager, do this however you need to do it. You're on Gen 2, you should know how to recompile your kernel. Anyways, we're gonna get on to the next part here is actually installing Steam. What I would recommend is if you've already tried Steam under Flatpak before, I would recommend you remove it. And the way that I did that is I ran Flatpak uninstall and I uninstalled all packages because I didn't have packages previously besides Steam. Of course, you can also do specifically the Valve software and Steam. And once that's uninstalled, you're going to want to go to the .var directory in your home folder. So that's home.var. And inside of here is app. And you'll see the Steam directory. I would delete this entire thing if it's not already. Because inside of here contains everything including all of the steam programs if that doesn't get removed remove it manually make sure that steam is completely gone once that's done we're going to actually run steam and of course again if you've only installed steam via flatpak make sure to install your game device udev rules that's going to be important for the controller working so let's launch steam now to do that, we type flatpak run and the name of the Steam program, which is com.valvesoftware.steam. And we're going to press enter and let that run. And I'm going to move my screen here so when Steam eventually opens, it'll open on this screen. Once you've made your way to the library, we're going to find Elden Ring. And what you may need to do is go to Steam and go to settings and make your way down to Steam Play and enable Steam Play for all to other titles. And you might have to restart Steam after that. It just depends on what it prompts you to do. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to the properties of Elden Ring, assuming that it has been installed. So you're just going to want to install the game normally. But once that's done, what I did to get everything working was disable Steam Overlay right here. And under compatibility, use Proton Experimental. Now I think that it does matter what the game is first run under. So set this compatibility option as soon as possible. You may be able to set it before you even install the game because upon first launch and during the initialization steps, it needs to install a couple dependencies to the prefix and making sure that you only have it set to the version that you want to run the game under ensures that nothing gets mixed up or broken. So I just made sure to keep it only on Proton Experimental and I did not enable any beta here, nor did I install any other software on Steam, such as the Easy Anti-Cheat Runtime. If it was installed for me, that was all through the game. I didn't do that manually. The next thing is to go under your controller settings and press on controller general settings, which will open up a Steam big picture. And I just mm -hmm. made sure that PlayStation configuration support was checked on, and so was generic gamepad configuration support. And I use a PS5 controller, but in your case, if you have an Xbox controller, you're gonna wanna check Xbox or whatever other controller you may have. So we're gonna go ahead and exit that now. The final thing that I did was this drop down menu right here, enable Steam input. With all of that said and done, you should now be able to launch Elden Ring, and I'll do a little example here. Press play, and we'll move to another screen. And the anti-cheat window should appear, load, close, and then the actual Elden Ring game should open, just like that. So I'm gonna show you now what it looks like assuming that you successfully got onto the online servers. So we're going to be met with the typical splash screen, and if we click through this, 
will be given the Elden Ring screen. And pressing any button, it's going to do a little check on the connection status. It's going to log into the Elden Ring game servers and give you an information saying, Welcome to the online multiplayer world of Elden Ring. Now, upon first installation, it may ask you to do some like accept data usage and all of that. So make sure that you do accept that. And if you do not want your data to be collected, you can actually go into the settings tab and go to the network and press decline right here and they won't be able to use your data. So with all of that being said, if we go ahead and load up a game, so I'm just going to continue my existing save. And we go down to the multiplayer tab here, you'll see that I have all of these options available to me. And I did do a bit of testing where I tried invading a few times and everything worked out just fine. The game runs and everything works. The controller does work as well. So that should cover everything. So if that helped you, uh, give the video a like, comment if you have any questions, join my Discord server if you want to get in touch with the community, subscribe if you want to see more of my content. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.